The notion of a deluxe e-reader is almost an oxymoron, up there with hot ice and wondrous strange snow. The popular idea is that if you have enough money for something like a Kindle Oasis, you probably already own an iPad with the Kindle app on it. And if you don't, well, then you settle for a more affordable Kindle that gets the job done almost as well. But I've just spent two months with all the conveniences of the most decked out Kindle around, and yeah, I have to say that I'd have a hard time going back to any other e-reader. I'm Mr. Mobile, and this is the Kindle Oasis Review. Okay, the only other e-reader I've covered is the Kobo Aura 1, and that's still my recommendation if you need a more open device that can easily read files like PDFs. But as I said in that review, Amazon's ecosystem is massive. So if you've already got a whole Kindle library at your fingertips, odds are you're staying under Amazon's roof. My favorite thing about the Oasis is the thing I least expected to like. This design is weird. With an asymmetric humpback and an off-center display on a nearly square chassis. It takes some getting used to. But after the endless parade of virtually identical thick plastic e-readers, it's such a relief to see a product that dares to stand out, even if the way it does that is by intentionally jumping out of the ugly tree. And the design has practical elements too. The offset bump makes the smooth metal easier to hold onto, while the super thin display ensures the weight is concentrated on the side you're holding. That can be left or right. You turn the Oasis upside down and the display flips over, while the buttons flip assignments automatically. Those buttons, of course, are for turning pages. The display is a touchscreen, but when you're holding the Oasis in a hand, the keys sit nicely under a thumb, so you don't need to tap the screen at all. Out of the box, those buttons are set so that next is on top while previous is down low. Well, that doesn't make any sense to me. Unfortunately, the Kindle software lets you reverse them. There's actually a lot of customizability here. Inside a book, you can tap the format menu to change font, orientation. If you dig a little deeper, you can switch over to landscape too. That took me forever to find, as did the option to invert colors, which is under accessibility. The display itself is fantastic, with a 300 dpi resolution and the familiar e-ink technology. Now, this is the number one reason to buy an e-reader, if you're a voracious reader. To the eye, e-ink looks just like words on a printed page, unlike a tablet, which feels more like reading on a TV. It also stays readable in direct sunlight, and it's much more power efficient. On the Oasis, I was able to get through one and a half books, about 700 pages, on three quarters of a charge. And I could have gone longer if I'd remembered to turn on airplane mode during one of my flights. Of course, the usual complaints about e-ink hold fast as well. Uh, it's slow to refresh, and if you're trying to open something like a PDF, the combination of the slow e-ink with a pretty slow processor means you're going to have a bad time. My advice? Leave the miscellaneous files to a proper tablet and stick to books when it comes to the Kindle. After all, that's one of the great things about a dedicated device for reading. No notifications, no distractions, no nonsense. Just books. Getting those books to my review unit was another delight. See, on an iPad, there's this stupid intermediate step that actually forces you to buy an ebook in the browser and then hop over to the Kindle app and sync it. But on the Kindle, it's a much easier process. And because my device was the top shelf model with LTE, I didn't need to turn on Wi-Fi to do it. The books synced over the cellular network for free, no matter where I was. I even synced a few books overseas. And speaking of the seas, the Oasis is great for the beach with IPX8 water resistance. Folks, you know I always cover the downsides, so let's hit them. If you've already converted your other gadgets to USB-C, you'll be annoyed to find an older micro USB port here. Also, while the screen's adaptive front lighting is very consistent, I was surprised to find that it's impossible to adjust its color temperature, which made reading at night less comfortable than it could have been. I just like my light a little warmer than this. And finally, there's the price. Even if you downgrade to the 8 gig Wi-Fi only model and consent to seeing Amazon ads on your lock screen, you're shelling out $249. Bump it to the 32 gig model with cellular and no ads, like I reviewed here, 
you're looking at 349. That sticks the Oasis firmly in the luxury category. Since again, most folks with a reading app on their tablet will probably be just fine doing their reading that way or picking up a Kindle Paperwhite for a little over a hundo. But the Oasis is the only waterproof Kindle. It's the one with the biggest display and the highest capacity. And it's the only one with even a hint of flair in its industrial design. True, only the hardest core of readers will care about any of that stuff, but, well, that's exactly who the Oasis is for, isn't it? This video was brought to you by Thrifter. Thrifter is a new way to save money on everything from gadgets to home goods by shopping based on value and not hype. Check out the latest deals at thrifter.com and tell them Mr. Mobile sent you. Folks, let me know if you want to take a look at any other e-readers on the market today or any other gadget categories that Mr. Mobile hasn't hit yet. And be sure you're subscribed to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube so you don't miss those videos when they go up every week. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.